In one of our first videos in this Our Biotube channel, I talked about the importance of sampling. The quality of your sampling method contributes largely to the quality of your final result, typically more than your actual analytical method. But there is a second step that influences the quality of your result or the total analytical error. That is the sample preparation. Again, the contribution of this step may exceed the effect of the analytical method itself, as this graphic here shows. The graphic shows three different commodities analyzed for mycotoxins, corn, wheat, peanuts, and the contribution of the sampling in green, the sample preparation in blue, and the analytical method in red. So let's have a closer look at the sample preparation, in particular to the grinding and the size of the sample to be extracted. Our colleagues from Trilogy Analytical Laboratory did several experiments to determine the effects of grinding size and sample size prior to extraction. They took two naturally contaminated corn samples, one with aflatoxin and one with serelanone, and one naturally contaminated barley sample with DON or deoxyneuvelanol. These products were ground with grinder to four different particle sizes, from relatively coarse to very finely ground. The first, least fine fraction, 50% passes through a 10 mesh screen, which means that 50% of the particles is smaller than 2 mm. The second fraction, 50% passes through a 20 mesh screen, which means that 50% of the particles is smaller than 0.8 mm. The third fraction, 95% passes through this 20 mesh screen. And the final fourth fraction, 100% passes through a 30 mesh screen, which means that all particles were smaller than 0.6 mm. Next, they took different amounts of sample to be extracted. A one gram sample of each grinding size, a 5 gram sample, a 10 gram sample, and a 25 gram sample of each. All samples were tested with LCMSMS and the results collected. This graphic shows the results for aflatoxin in corn. Each bar represents a grinding size. The 10 mesh in blue to the left, then the 20 mesh in yellow and red, and finally the 30 mesh in green. Each dot represents a result. The blue dots are the 1 gram samples, the yellow dots the 5 gram samples, the purple dots the 10 gram sample, and the green dots the 25 gram samples. The graphic clearly shows that for less finely ground samples, the variation in result is much bigger than for the finely ground samples. But also, the smaller sample sizes show a much bigger variation than the larger sample sizes. The next graphic shows the same experimental setup, but now for serelanone in corn and don in barley. Instead of bars, the results are now shown in a pie diagram, but the message is the same. Less finely ground samples lead to larger variations as well as smaller sample sizes. So the message is, the accuracy of your results increases with more finely ground, larger samples prior to extraction. If it's not possible to grind the sample very finely, it is advisable to extract a bigger amount of sample. Vice versa, if your method allows only a small sample to be extracted, we advise you to grind the sample as finely as possible. I hope this video will help you to put more robustness and accuracy in your results. Please contact us if you would like to receive more detailed information about these studies. We will be glad to send them to you. Thank you for watching this video.